Chris Adset came to Colorado State from Wheat Ridge, Colorado, and immediately made a name for himself on the track and field team. He was just an outstanding athlete. Uh, he was here in the 70s, in the mid 70s. Uh, I was really excited when he, uh, I got here and he got here. Um, he's kind of what you might say a, a real gem in the rough and uh, his potential is just unbelievable. We had a tremendous group of what I call sprint and intermediate high hurdles. Uh, and um, Chris Adset was, uh, you know, really quite the, quite the athlete. He set the school record in the 440 yard hurdles in 1972. He was an inspiration to his teammates and helped everyone improve. He was a great competitor and um, he always did it the right way. He was a tremendous mentor when it came to um, workouts. Um, and uh, I, we just had some great workouts um, that we did together. And we really grew as a, as a group, you know, as a unit. Chris competed in many of the great track and field events around the country and became an All-American. Chris was absolutely outstanding. I don't think I ever saw Chris run a bad race. You know, he won the Drake relays. He won the Kansas relays. He won just about every major event that uh, he participated in. And of course, going to the NCAA and being an All-American uh, just climaxed his uh, career. Two years in a row, Chris won CSU's award for the top male scholar athlete. He was the epitome of a student athlete. He was an outstanding student, did a tremendous amount of things for the community. He was a two-time Merle Dean Award winner, which is the outstanding uh, academic student uh, in the athletic department. Uh, he was a leader on the team. He always had a great positive attitude. He, he's everything a student athlete is supposed to be. He was, he was just a great role model, great competitor. You know, he placed in the top five at the NCAAs, which is uh, an All-American, which is, he was a pioneer in at that point, and really was one of the most fierce competitors. I don't think anybody could out-train him or out-work him. So between his ability to do a 13 stride pattern, be a great competitor. Uh, he was just a, a real gift for a, for a track coach. Harvey Oxiger came to Colorado A&M from Eaton, Colorado and became a starting lineman for all three years he played. Well, I played uh, high school ball with him at Eaton here oh, in the late 40s. Then he was a year ahead of me, and I, I followed him over to CSU a few years later, you know, so. He played both ways and everything. We played uh, quite a bit. Uh, he was just a hard-nosed football player that played the game the way it should be played. He was a, a tackle, and uh, really recognized as one of the best ones in the region, and that proved out to be true in that the fact that, that uh, he did make all-conference a couple times in All-America. The Aggies had a 17-11-1 record during the three years Harvey played. He showed great leadership that caught the attention of his teammates. Probably as much of anything as his leadership. Uh, you know, when Harvey spoke, people listened, that type of thing. He was quiet, he wasn't allowed, but he did it, he followed. And uh, I was quite in awe of him because I was a pretty much a young kid when he first started it. And uh, so, and here's this great big moose, you know, I, I was quite taken with him. He, he wasn't a raw, raw type of guy. He was a leader by example, more than anything, you know. He just, uh, he played the way the game should be played and uh, no nonsense, no showboating or anything. He just, and uh, just one great athlete, I thought. Harvey went on to play one year in the Canadian Football League with the Hamilton Tiger Cats before retiring from football. Harvey does deserve to be, to receive this award because he was a, a team leader. Uh, we looked up to him. I'm glad to see Harvey get, get in and be set alongside of guys that played in his era, which is McGraw and Dardrill and Tuffy Mollison and uh, my high school teammate, Bob Weber. Those guys are already in and, and I'm glad to see that he's one of them. State. And Pepperdine. And Pepperdine has been the stronger team in this one. One of the great players in the United States, Jill Johnson. 
Jill Johnson Bedard was one of those volleyball players who never left the court. She was an outside hitter, um, but you know volleyball was different back then. Um, I mean, she stayed on the court the whole time. They didn't sub her out, so she was doing service, receive, and pass. She was a key passer for the team. Um, uh, you know, they wanted her on the court all the time. She started all four years and concluded her career as the Rams' all-time leader in attacks and digs. Being a high school All-American, coming in and uh, starting on a, on a very good team at the time that was an NCAA qualifying team, I think they finished in the top 16 her freshman year, and to come in and, and earn a starting spot as an outside hitter uh, for the team, I think it says something of her talent. And your All-American candidate hitting left side. And the volleyball coach back in the 80s was Rich Feller, who now heads up the program at the University of California. I just wanted to say congratulations to Jill Johnson for her election into the Colorado State Athletic Hall of Fame. Well deserved, Jill. For four years, you were a starter, one of my best all round players. Uh, you hold lots of records, you're in the top 10 in about every offensive category there is and you were just a worker throughout your career. You did great, you never complained, you played through injuries, and uh, just a delight to coach. So a well-deserved honor, Jill, congratulations, and congratulations, Colorado State. She led the Rams in back-to-back -back NCAA appearances in 1987 and 1988, and still holds the CSU record for kills in a match at 41. Had a chance earlier, Newton is stopped. Wow. What a block by Jill Johnson. For the, the committee to recognize uh, what she did for the program at the time, I think it means a lot because uh, she didn't get honored as an All-American. Um, again, the committee took a hard look at that and um, realized what a player she was. I think it means a, a heck of a lot to her. Obviously, it means a lot to me, um, but uh, just to I think it reaffirms her career here, reaffirms her place in Colorado State and that she did leave some sort of a legacy here. John Meadows coached the water polo and swim teams at Colorado State for many years. He also competed as a student athlete here and during his time on the swim team, he learned a great deal from Coach Art Solo and Jim Malley. Jim was here through the late 60s, 66 through 68. He graduated uh, the, the year that I came in. But he was on deck every day helping coach my first year here and having his encouragement and his knowledge on deck helping me on a day out, day in, day out basis led to my success. Jim Malley played a big role in leading the way to success for the CSU swim teams in the 60s. Jim was a competitor. Um, he came out of a program that had a lot of not only collegiate All-Americans, but Olympians through the Santa Clara Swim Club. When he came, got to Colorado State, he just went nuts and had success that uh, was rare at this level, Division I level. The team itself was uh, uh, in the middle years there, uh, was fourth and fifth in the nation uh, in the NCAAs, which I think is a tribute to Art Solo. But it's all predicated on what we did back here in the late 60s and early 70s here at Colorado State under Art Solo's guidance and Jim Malley's watch. Jim Malley set many records while at CSU, one of which still shows on the record board today. In the pool, Jim was dynamic. Uh, outside the pool, you, you're just drawn to him. His, you know, he, he was just kind of, he had that leadership characteristic. He, you wanted to kind of follow him around a little bit and, oh, let's do what Jim does, you know. <laughs> He was a real team leader. He was uh, very serious about his swimming. He wanted to excel in his swimming, which he did. And uh, he was an inspiration to uh, all the rest of the teammates. He wanted to excel, and he did. I'm just proud that he's being inducted into the hall. I, 
I can't say enough about uh, how important this is to, to the past of men swimming. Jim lives in California now and is a teacher and swim coach who strives to inspire young athletes and students. Sends a man in motion, that's Workman to the left. Here is the quick toss and it's gonna be Damon Washington. Touchdown, he starts to the left, cuts it back to the middle and scores a Ram touchdown. Sonny Lubick was blessed with many great running backs during his time at Colorado State. Damon Washington was clearly one of the best. When we had Damon Washington, we had one of the premier running backs in our conference, and uh, you could, one could always count on him. And Damon was a talented, shifty, uh, good running back and could catch the ball out of the backfield. Damon was a guy who played with a lot of intensity. He was a, a, a real battler. And I, I was thinking about him last night, and it's almost like a mouse. A mouse just needs a, a, enough of a hole to get his head through, and then it could get the rest of his body in there, too. That's the same way Damon was. You give him that tiny hole, especially on the outside, you get his body through. And, he'd always, and it always seemed to me he'd always get a few extra yards. One play that Mike remembers happened at Michigan State in 1988. It was fourth and goal from the three-yard line. Here we go, Damon wants to throw. Now he's got to run the ball. He will score! Touchdown on the right side! He picked up that fourth and goal, scored the touchdown, and that, you know, we're playing in front of 75,000. None of us had really experienced that before. He punches that ball in, and we kind of just got that momentum going. Another play that Coach Lubick recalls happened at San Diego State, and the Rams were backed up deep in their own territory. I think it was third and 31 or third and 30 and Coach Lahey called one of his famous draw plays and Damon broke it for 32 yards and it was a big play and we got first down and I had a real sigh of relief on, in, in my heart because it kind of that kind of cinched the game for us. We could run out the clock. But uh, Damon broke that thing, broke some tackles, and that's the type of bat. Once he got through that initial wave of defenders, you get him on linebacker secondary, anything could happen. But that was a, yeah, that, I, we were all laughing. Even on the phones at that time, we were like, how the heck did <laughs> They brought the change in, and we made the first down by about that much. Damon's career stats might have been even more impressive except that he always shared the running back duties with guys like Calvin Branch and Kevin McDougal. Six yards a carry, I mean, he had 600 carries, I think, roughly in his career, going for about 3,600 yards, and you can't help but think of what would he have done if he would have gotten the bulk of the carries every game both those years. I mean, he would have been a, maybe a 6,000-yard rusher in his career. I had blocked for him uh, for four years. It was an honor, uh, 95 through 98. He's a phenomenal football player, and I feel like, you know, he's, I'd consider him a brother. Absolutely. Damon Washington was all whack in 1997, the same year he helped the Rams defeat Missouri in the Holiday Bowl. Just been a wonderful ambassador that while he was here at Colorado State, he helped us win championships. Uh, and then, you know, I guess you look at his career after that, and any time a player can go, and play at any length of time in the NFL and do things like that, it proves that he is something extra special. Five rib touchdown! The third of the day for Damon Washington. Officially will start first down at the three yard line and here's the handoff straight ahead. Big hole for McDougal. He's at the 20, 25, 30. Kevin McDougal was one of the top running backs in Colorado while in high school and Sonny Lubick was always looking for a good running back. I, that was my coaching genius coming out in me again, is that we'll take this guy, make him a strong safety. At Fresno State, the Rams had run out of healthy running backs, and Kevin entered the offensive lineup for his first play as a college running back. I remember the play well. You know, we, he got in the game, and uh, it was a draw play, and it was about 40 yards out, and sure enough, Kevin, he ripped that thing out for a touchdown, but 40 yards on your first college career, carry. I mean, that kind of, he proved it to us right there that he belonged on the opposite side of the ball. I guess it would be hard for me to go back and, and tell the sports, right, well, we're keeping him at safety, you know. 
Just hands it off. This is McDougal. Big hole. He's at midfield. 45-40. He went on to be ranked fourth at CSU in career rushing yards and third in career touchdowns with 36. Darted, I'm sure I'm happy they made him a running back because you want to talk about a hard-nosed, tough runner, um, got upfield. You know, he made people pay for it if they were going to try to hit him. Pitches the ball to McDougal, and he wants to throw it wide open. Smith, touchdown! He would play so darn hard that he would have his thighs would be taped or his rib cage. He injured, but he when the game, when the band started playing and the and the game was for real, Kevin just shined. One other play I remember is in the WAC championship game, and we were kind of we were up on New Mexico. I think it was fourth quarter. Coach Benton, who's down there with the Texans now, our offensive line coach, came over. He's like, we're close. I think we're close on getting Kevin up to 1,000 yards on the season. We already had Damon over 1,100 yards. And he's like, I, I think we're within just a few yards. So we went out there, we ran a play. Kevin goes 80 yards for a touchdown. And, and I remember the pride that that offensive line felt after that play. Watching Kevin just break that thing, 80 yards for a touchdown. Really just slammed the door uh, on New Mexico. In 1999, Kevin McDougal was a Doak Walker Award nominee and was named the Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Kevin is, a, he was a special, talented young man. Again, a, a good student, did what he had to in school, uh, came from a CSU family. He, both he and David, they made a, a name for CSU as well as themselves on the way they played and how hard they played. He gets the call, short side of the field, big hole, he's at the 30, 35, he's at the 40, he's at midfield, to the 40, 35, 30, 25, and finally run out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Wow, leave it to Kevin McDougal.